Well, thank you to IT Mate now in the hundreds of millions of dollars that Indiana is losing in tax revenue to neighboring states. The recreational marijuana industries in Michigan and Illinois are booming. Michigan reported tax revenue of $325 million last year. Illinois, $445 million. Those numbers raise a big question. How much are people from Indiana contributing to that boom? That's what IT Mate's Cody Fisher drove to Michigan to find out. Seven and a half miles from the Indiana border sits the small town of Buchanan, Michigan. 17 years ago, you could shoot a cannon down the middle of the street and you wouldn't hit anyone. It was like the land that time forgot. Uh, there were 24 empty storefronts. Now, in 2023, Thank you, friend. thanks to the marijuana industry, antique shop owner Alan Robant says that's all changed. I have lots more people coming in spending money because it's kind of a, almost a can of tourism um, where they come in, they'll go across the street to the coffee house, the Italian sweet shop, um, they'll go to the other antique stores. So it's definitely a destination shopping crowd. A shopping crowd spending a lot of money. 145.76. With piles of that green coming from Indiana. We do have a substantial amount of uh, guests that come from Indiana, primarily seeking wellness medical benefits that we provide here. Rick Panaagua owns Cana Vista Wellness. He says customers from Indiana are coming to his store seeking a different option to pharmaceutical drugs to treat an array of different conditions. Whether it's um, severe depression, mild depression, PTSD, uh, anxiety, problems sleeping, problems with appetite, but we do tell them that um, you know it is you know federally prohibited to transport cannabis across state lines, and that they should consume it while they're here in the state of Michigan. However, you know if there's some left over, you know, transported outside the vision. In investigating this story, we found that retail sales tax is only a portion of the economic impact cannabis can have on a state. Industrial sized grows like this one also play a role. Fellow cannabis spent $9 million to build this grow facility. It produces 800 pounds of marijuana a month, providing a living for dozens of people. 55 full-time employees ranging from frontline employees making 15, 16, 17 dollars an hour plus benefits to managers making six figures. Fellow Cannabis is owned by an Indiana family. They want to bring that many jobs to the economy here. We would love to move our headquarters down to Indiana. It's where I live and my family lives. We'd love to open up shop down there once it's legalized and bring the, this beautiful market to the state of Indiana. We took what we found in Michigan to the state house in Indianapolis. On this issue in particular, we've, we've stuck our head in the sand. Democrat Kyle Miller supports legalizing marijuana in the state. We're looking at a potential windfall that could fund our, our cities, uh, our education system, uh, all these things we need to be making investments in. Uh, I think there are plenty of Hoosiers that are currently enjoying cannabis, uh, albeit illegally, um, and to get all those people above board um, paying taxes on that would be uh, a mighty windfall for Indiana. I asked Republican Senator Aaron Freeman about the potential economic impact. For him, the argument over recreational marijuana boils down to one thing. The federal government has said this is federally a Schedule One narcotic drug and it's illegal. If the federal government makes marijuana legal? Let's see if we get there, right? I mean, let's see if that happens. And when that happens, we are having an entirely different conversation. But for now, we follow the law. Reporting in Indianapolis, Cody Fisher, Wish TV, ITM8.